Hey everybody, thanks for hanging out. Today we're gonna check out one of my favorite movies, Tommy Boy. And let's see what Chris Farley has to say about sales anxiety. And then I'll, I'll tell you what I think and about my experience with having anxiety about selling. All right, here we go. You do this, it's gotta be the one, I gotta do this. You gotta be me, it's gonna be <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah, sorry, I'm ready. Hey, does this suit make me look fat? No, 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 your face does. Okay, let's check you out. So mean. I'm just saying, David Spade's a little mean. All right. <laughs> That's a clip, huh? <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. All right, now, it's sale time. So remember, we don't take no... No shit from anyone. No. Uh, we don't take no prisoners. We don't take no for an answer. Oh, yeah. We don't take no for an answer. Yeah. We don't take no for an answer. We don't take no for an answer. Okie dokie. <laughs> okay, okay, I just want to. So we don't take no for an answer. I can't even imagine if I walked into every sale believing that we're not gonna take no for an answer. <laughs> it, I would be, first of all, I'd be mortified and it would be such a painful sales conversation because, I mean, look at this guy's face, right? The prospect's like, I'm not buying whatever you're selling. The answer is no. All right, so let's, let's see what happens because clearly um, Tommy Boy took a no as a let's go, but his buddy's still sitting there. No. Gotcha, thanks. <laughs> oh. Mm -mm. Terrific, thanks for your time. Let me say, maybe. Well then, I I'd just like to add that the spectrometer readout on the nickel cadmium alloy mix indicates a good rich strobe and fade, decreasing incidence of wear to the pressure plate. If you could just- Whoa, little fella, uh, you're not speaking my language. So here's where uh, David Spade's character is missing an opportunity to really connect with intention. So he's coming from the the belief he's coming from the belief that selling is telling, and that you always have to be talking and just like vomiting out information. You got to keep sharing. And the guy's like that. That's not what I want to know. Like the prospect is always wondering, you know, what what's the problem that you can solve for me, or what's the need that you can meet, and he doesn't feel connected with these two, right? You could see his face, it was like, maybe. He said maybe because he doesn't know if he likes them, he doesn't know if he trusts them, right? Like, know, and trust, he doesn't feel connected. And so David's character is definitely like jumping the gun here, trying to like, you know, give him information rather than connecting with him. So let's see what happens next. Mm, what my associate is trying to say is that uh, our new brake pads are really cool. You're not even gonna believe it. Like. Um, let's say you're driving along the road with your family, and you're driving along, la la la, woo, and then all of a sudden there's a truck tire in the middle of the road, and you hit the brakes. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, wait, so two things here. I, I definitely think how Tommy Boy, Chris Farley's character, is connecting. Like, he's, he's not using what I would consider to be, you know, industry terms. He's using third grade language, right, which most of us can communicate with. I always tell people, like, say it to me in... Talk to me like I'm a third grader and I'll totally understand what you're saying, right? If it's something that is very, is a complicated subject, for example. So he's breaking it down like he's a third grader. He's even grabbing a visual tool, a visual aid to help showcase or to help show his point or to help get his point across, which is great. What I wouldn't do though, I wouldn't, I would never grab something from someone desk that's not mine and use it without their permission first because you can see that the prospect is clearly attached to that car and a little upset that Chris... Farley's character, Tommy Boy, is about to crash this car. That was close. <laughs> now let's see what happens when you're driving with the other guy's brake pads. You're driving along, you're driving along, and all of a sudden the kids are yelling from the back seat, I gotta go to the bathroom, Daddy! Not now, damn it! Truck tire! I can't stop! Oh, no. oh, oh, oh. Help! There's a cliff! Oh! And your family screaming, oh my god, we're fire. burning alive! No, I can't feel my legs! In comes a meat wagon! Wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo. And the medic gets out and says, oh my god! New guy's in the corner puking his guts out! <laughs> All because you want to save a couple extra pennies. <laughs> and to me, it doesn't get out. Now! Sir. That's unfortunate. Do you validate? No. Okay, thank you. <laughs> that last part was unfortunate. 
I do think that he had the prospect's attention, right, using visual aid. Had he not smashed it, uh, I think he was going in the right direction because he was trying to show that, you know, the brake pads, if you pay a little bit more, if you invest a little bit more in these brake pads, in the long run, the, you know, whatever vehicles they're selling are actually going to be safer. So it was the right, it was the right approach, but I think they missed some great opportunities to sell. So let's talk about that because I get it. When you're in a sales appointment, you're, of course, you're going to feel nervous. Of course, you're going to feel like you don't want to say the wrong thing, especially if it's a big opportunity. I've definitely been there. But the thing to remember, and as I said this before, the thing to remember is that selling is not telling. Selling is asking questions. So if I would have been in that sales situation or if I could have had advised these two, I would have said pull back a little bit, right? They're both like very you know, anxious and you can just feel their energy and that they just want to close the sale. But I would say pull back a little bit, even in your body language, relax and start to ask your prospect open-ended questions. So I would ask an open-ended question and it could be around vendors they've worked with in the past. I might say, you know, what hasn't worked with, or what are two things that haven't worked with vendors you've worked with in the past? Because I'm curious about, I'm curious to find out why they're even willing to talk to me, right? What's not working right now? And then we can see if there's a need or a way that we can, we can either solve that problem for them or kind of help them fix the situation that they're in right now. So I'd be asking those open-ended questions, pain related first. And then I would ask them some goal related questions. I might ask if you were going to work with a new vendor, what are two things that you would expect from that vendor or a vendor like us? What would you expect from us to make sure that this was a good fit for you? That question, that open-ended question is going to elicit a lot of information for you. And it's going to give you information to figure out the truth. And the truth is either we can help you or we can't. In fact, that's what I recommend most sales conversations start with is, Hey, Shelly, we're here today to see if we could help you fill in the blank, whatever it is that they need help with, or if we're not a good fit. And if we're not a good fit, we'd love to refer you to someone else who is. So it's a very collaborative meeting where we're going to be asking open-ended questions to get to know them. They're going to be asking us questions to get to know us. What you have to remember though, is that you're in the driver's seat. You're moving that conversation forward. You're directing that conversation so that ultimately this prospect can make a decision about whether or not you're, you are a good fit. And if you are awesome, close the sale, move forward and help this, this prospect who's in front of you. If you're not, if you're not, that's okay too. That's an opportunity, you know, to thank them for their time and, and part ways. And even if you part ways, you could say, you know, if something changes, you know, you know about us now and please reach out if there's any way that we can help you. Sales anxiety is real. And I also, I also encourage business owners that we work with or sales professionals that before they go in for a sales appointment to just take a moment, right? Don't rush from the car to the appointment or don't rush onto a zoom call. Take a minute to center yourself, take a minute to, you know, just breathe for a minute and then also be very clear on your intention for that meeting. So your intention might be, you know, to serve this prospect at the highest level. Your intention might be to ask these open-ended questions. Your intention might be to provide solutions if you can. Your intention is to help them figure out if you're a valid solution for what they need or not. And at the end of the day, your intention is to serve, to serve at the highest level. And when you come in with that clear intention, your prospect, they're gonna feel that. And they're gonna immediately feel that you care enough to solve their problem, meet their need, and, and provide the support that they're looking for right now. So today we got to hang out with Chris Farley and Tommy Boy and David Spade and really dig into sales anxiety and what might be coming up for you right now in sales meetings that's not working. So I hope the tips I gave today will help you close more sales. And stick with me because next up, we're gonna be watching a clip of a league of their own and you're not gonna wanna miss it. Thanks for hanging out and remember, your 2X is waiting for you too.